Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to be replacing the front CV axle boots on our 2007 Yamaha Grizzly YFM 700. Let's head over to the table, talk about the parts and the tools that we're going to need, and then we'll dive into it. This is going to be a skill level two. So let's go over some of the tools you're gonna to need to pull this off. As always, a good torque wrench. Just make sure the one you have can go past 100 foot pounds. 3 8 ratchet on the socket side, just a 12, 17, 19, and 27 millimeter. A couple of different pairs of pliers, 14 millimeter wrench, flat blade screwdriver, and just a decent hammer. Now, if you would, reference our exploded parts diagrams. That's gonna give you an exact picture how everything's gonna come apart and more importantly, how it's gonna go back together. If you're having trouble deciding which parts you need for your project, look down in the description. We've got a link there that already has a shopping list ready to go. So, once you've got your tools and your parts together, we can go get this done. So let's go. It starts off really simple, guys. We need to get the front of the machine lifted. Just make sure that you're using a jack that's stable and can hold it in place. Now with the unit up in the air, all we need to do is get the tire off. All right, let's start off by getting this outer cover off. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove this uh, axle nut. We wanna take a punch and relieve where it's actually bent in onto the axle, then we can get the nut removed. All right, with that bent back, you can either have somebody hold the brakes or do like I'm going to do and just use an impact to pop it off. Let's go ahead and get our caliper off and then we'll start getting that knuckle pulled down. Just two 12 millimeters to hold the, the caliper bracket on to the knuckle housing. And what we're going to do is lift it up and out of the way and hang it by a zip tie, maybe off of that spring. As you can tell, the brake pads on this unit are brand new, so if you need help changing out yours, why don't you go check out our video that shows you how to do it. All right, we're gonna take off our steering arm and upper control arm, and, but there's a couple of cotter pins we have to get out first. Go ahead and get the steering arm first. And we need to use a dead blow hammer on that because a regular hammer is gonna damage the threads. We're going to have to get a little bit more personal with this thing. That got it. That was a last resort. I hate doing that, but it is what it is. What I did is took the castle nut and just put it on backwards. And there was just enough of a gap right here to where I could hit it with a direct blow hammer or metal hammer. And that was enough of a shock to get it out of there. All right, with our steering arm out of the way, let's go for that upper ball joint. All right, let's see if we can knock it out with a punch. I want to be careful doing it this way and not damage the threads. Right, well, seeing how that's about to fall off, let's go ahead and get it out of the way. There we go. Now let's go ahead and get off that lower ball joint. It's just held in by a 19 millimeter down at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and reverse it, put it back on, then use our hammer to pop it loose. There she goes. All right, let's see if we can get this half shaft pulled out. What I'm going to do is use a pry bar on one of the webs back there, put some pressure on it, and then pop it. There we go. Good to go. Now let's set over to the bench. Well, as you can tell, there's two different part numbers, so make sure you get one of each if you're gonna rebuild the entire CV joint, which I'm going to do. Now this particular one, well, it just has a cut in it. But the good part is I caught it early, so the joint still feels good. Now if you've got a cut in yours and you sling out all your grease and you let a bunch of dirt and water and everything else get in that joint, it's gonna wear it out and destroy it. So if you see a rip in your boot, Go ahead and do something about it now because it'll cost you a lot more to do later. Now I know I've only got damage on the outside, but I want to go ahead and show you how to do both the inner and the outer boots. So we've got our lock down. And Yamaha uses a pretty cool setup. You're not even going to need a tool to reattach these like some of the other manufacturers. And honestly, you could actually reuse the clamps if you had to. Just bend up those tabs. 
and that releases it, just like that. And off they come. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is just slide it down, and that will expose the inner working of the CV joint itself, and the part that we're gonna hit is all the way against the actual CV shaft itself, because if you hit out here, you're gonna knock it off the bearings and just make a mess out of it and possibly damage some of the pieces inside, and you don't want to do that. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that boot off so I've got some room to work. There. Where we're wanting to hit is all the way on the inside, right? There, there she is. And we managed to do that without damaging anything, so life is good. Now you'll notice what was holding that in place was just this little ring, which actually locked inside of a channel further up inside of that joint. And with this kit, they actually send a new one. So we'll go ahead and pull the old one off. With that all cleaned up and out of the way, now we can address the inside boot. It comes apart the same way. Get to those two tabs that are folded down on the clamps and open them up. Now, I just want to get as much of this old grease cleaned out as I can. You do not want to spray a bunch of uh, brake cleaner in here to try to get it perfect. That would not end well. We just want to wipe out as much old grease as we can get to and then add in the new. Uh, if you've got water, mud, and dirt that's already in yours, you probably need to go ahead and replace it, honestly. You can try to clean it out, but I wouldn't recommend that. All right, since we're not removing this inner joint, we will not be using this second snap ring that they send. We will replace the one on the very outside at the spindle itself. Now on this particular job, I'm just replacing the boots because really that's all that needs to be done. Now if you look back at our diagram, it gives you a completely exploded view of every single piece in here that you can order individually from us should you need it. So that in mind, I'm leaving this outside joint in place, gonna repack it with grease and replace the boots because that's all this particular half shaft needs. Let's go ahead and start packing the joints back up with grease. I've got it pushed all the way up that way I've got a pretty large cavity to fill. That should do. Grab our new boot and start working it back down. When you're pushing down over the joint, you do not want to get any grease in between this point and this point because I want that to be a dry fit. That way it'll hold on better. Then this section goes into that groove that you can see on the other end. There's one right here as well. All right, now take our new clamps, slide them over in place. I like to have them where this front edge is going with the direction of rotation. So when you've got it on, once I bend this back into position, this back edge is on the back side of the rotation. So it's rotating forward. That way there's no way for anything to maybe hit that edge and lift it up. Now, let's take care of that outside one. And don't make this rookie mistake and forget to put this on first. Great sound effects. Gonna go ahead and fill it all the way up. Like I said, try to keep it off that outside edge so we get a dry fit on the boot. Maybe a little bit more in our boot. Go ahead and ease it on. Now, don't forget to put your little clip back on the end. And like I said, there's a new one in this kit. Now, go ahead and get it on there. Make sure you're lined up on the splines. When you're putting this back on, you wanna make sure that you've got that clip up inside that groove, especially on the ends. Otherwise, it's not gonna to wanna to go. I think I've got it. There she goes. Bring our boot back up. Now we just need to get our clamps in place. All 
right, everything's back in place. Let's go get it back on the machine. Before we uh, put it in, go and take just a little bit of grease. Don't get carried away because there's actually oil up inside that front differential. I just want to add a little bit to the splines before we uh, reinstall it. There she goes. Pop her in. All right, now we just need to get the steering knuckle back on there. Should we ever have to take this back apart again, go ahead and take just a little bit of grease to the splines so it doesn't rust and it'll come apart easily. Get that slid back through, get a lower one on. Get it started. In our upper. All right, we're just gonna snug them down to begin with, then we'll get them torqued. The lower ball joint gets set to 22 foot-pounds. Go and get our cotter pin back through. Then the upper is 18 foot-pounds. Now, as luck would have it, none of those holes lined up, so I'd just put a little bit more on it to where I can get it to go through. Sometimes it takes what it takes. Now let's get the uh, steering arm on. And this one, if you were paying attention, actually has a washer on it. And it will go to 18 foot-pounds. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and get this outer hub on. And it's important here to use a new axle nut because we have to restake it. So we're gonna go ahead and draw this in. All right, now we can cut our caliper bracket loose, get it remounted, and then get this torque down. And for each one of these, it's gonna be 22 foot-pounds. All right, this guy right here has to have 190 foot-pounds on it, so how are we gonna do that? What I'm gonna do is get all these tools out of the way, take off my center cap on the wheel itself, remount it, drop it down, put it in park, hold the brakes, and have it sitting on the ground, and that should be enough to hold it still to bring it around to 190 foot-pounds. There we go. Take the tire back off, then we can stake it, put the cap back on, and finish it up. Now 40 pounds on the lug nuts. Well, all right guys, that wraps this one up. Well listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. You like what you see? Why don't you hit that subscribe button, that way you can keep up with what I'm going to be doing next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.